So this episode is brought to you by my Accounting Starter Digital Course for Small Business or uh, Entrepreneurs or Solo Entrepreneurs. Okay, good morning. So today is Wednesday, another Wednesday, March 3. So it's March already. Uh, it's the end of the, about to end uh, of the first quarter of the year. 2021 a lot of things are going on especially in our business which is good which is a good problem so today I'm gonna be discussing how to map your business process to your software or ERP software uh, in my previous post I talk about the importance of business process automation so I suggest if you haven't already um, please listen to it first and just jump uh, right back in in this episode so in that episode also I have links on the standard process flow for a typical small business and a gap analysis template so once you have established your as is business process uh, and then analyze the gaps and then define the to be business process then the next step is to map it to the ERP software but before that I'll uh, have a quick uh, discussion about gap analysis and how to do it so together with the links in the previous post, there's a gap analysis template there. So what you'll find in that template are the list of things, or it's like a matrix or table of things that you can do to analyze if uh, your gaps in your business or your business process, say on a per department or function, uh, you have to define who is the accountable person. And then, uh, for example, uh, in the purchasing department, who is the accountable person? And then the next column there is like your current state or your current process. So, for example, if you're someone who's like na, not issuing a purchase order to your suppliers, so you can record that as your current state. Then the challenge, of course, um, say, for example, if you are not issuing that purchase order, so you'll have a hard time tracking your POs or your orders from your suppliers, tracking your deliveries or expected uh, goods that you have ordered, and worry about your stocks on a critical level. Then the next column would be your desired state. So, of course, your desired state is a computerized record of purchases, including history, reminders if you need to replenish stocks. And then uh, the last column in the gap analysis template is your action plan. So what is your uh, action plan with that uh, challenge or identified gap uh, that you have established in the template? So basically, that's how you do your gap analysis in a high-level overview. So going back to the mapping of your business process to the ERP software, uh, it is really important to do the mapping because um, that's where you can analyze what you need versus the stock version of the ERP software uh, of your preferred ERP vendors. So that can help you identify the best vendor to choose what customizations to do or needed to be done if there will be any. So another downloadable template that I have uh, established in my previous post and I'm going to be sharing also here is a standard uh, checklist for an ERP project. So this checklist is the one we use for our clients, our prospective clients. And um, I'm going to be discussing the importance of each information in this checklist so you can align them with your prospective vendor. So in that checklist, there's uh, like uh, the company information and the nature of business. So it is important to inform your nature of the business because that is a quick and high-level understanding already of what you need. Do you sell goods? Do you offer services? Do you do projects or a mix of uh, each? So as a business process consultant myself, if I see the nature of business, so I can already uh, right away grasp the need of the particular client. So next in the list is an information if you have an existing software, if you have any, and what are the pain points that you experience in that existing software. And what is the reason for upgrading to another or an updated software? Next is the IT infra or infrastructure. Or if you have an in-house IT team, you have to also inform your vendor. So you can assess and decide if you're going to be maintaining your own IT or you go for a fully cloud-based software. Do you prefer an on-premise setup 
or an online cloud setup? Would you go for an in-house IT or would you be outsourcing for uh, an IT firm or an IT person? Because if you're going to be maintaining an ERP software, you're going to be needing support from these people. Next is you have to define your number of users. What are your different departments, profit centers, cost centers, and or your branches? Um, so this information will tell you how complex the implementation will be. So the more number of branches equates to a more complex implementation. Next in the list is the preferred software licensing. Would you go for an outright perpetual license or would you prefer a subscription-based uh, licensing model? So an on-premise installation uh, normally is the outright perpetual license and cloud-based is usually software as a service or subscription-based. Next is you have to tell or identify if you have uh, unique business processes. So this should be identified at the onset so you can assess if you're open to customizing an existing off-the-shelf software and or your vendor can assess if they will uh, be open or willing to customize their products for you. Next is um, if you have a need for online approval workflow. So you have to identify if yes, then you'll have to consider if this is feasible in your setup and uh, your people are ready or infrastructure-wise, uh, the comp is the company or organization ready for that. So in the link uh, below this video is the detailed RFP checklist that I'm going to be sharing with you, uh, same checklist that we share to our clients or prospective clients including uh, forms and reports that you'd like to see. Uh, so feel free to use it and ask your ERP vendors to offer a proposal based on your detailed requirement. So feel free to use this and ask your ERP vendors to offer a proposal based on your detailed requirement. So that is it for now. In my next post, I'll be discussing about data gathering and what you need to prepare and set up uh, to you know, use an ERP software, including templates that you can use for your initial data buildup. So this episode is brought to you by my Accounting Starter Digital Course for small business or uh, entrepreneurs or solo entrepreneurs. So this course is about the basics of accounting. Um, we have like government compliance, uh, journal entries, what books to prepare, what forms and reports that you use for your accounting and up to about basic interpretation of your financial statements. So it is a six-module course that you can watch at your own pace. So it's already pre-recorded and um, I hope that this will help you um, jumpstart your business process automation. So just go to accountingcourseph.com to enroll and get instant access. So and by the way, if you enroll in this course, uh, this comes with a free uh, online access to our snap accounting software and the good thing here is that you'll be able to use it use it as a learning tool and you can use it for your business anytime forever so if you're someone who wishes to fast track your knowledge about business process automation i have an online private one-on-one uh, -on -one workshop for this it comes with the one month free access to our online erp software so you can also try it uh, while you learn in how to implement or do your business process automation. So that is it for this episode. DX your life and business. Have a great day.